Pepper, what is the problem? Segovia, the anchor line's hanging slack in the water. It must have broke. No anchor. And I can't start the engine, because there's the starter motor. The wind's blown us right onto the cliffs. Can't we put the sails up? Never get them up in time. Grab that grappling hook. Enjoy being dry. Five minutes. This hook's way too light for both this size. But if it catches a coral head, it should hold. Yeah. Here, at least I can get that. Pepper, tell me something. We are safe? We're okay now. You know, Pepper, the Maya thought of the sea as the underworld. I have always thought they were right about that. Interesting visit, to say the least. Your house. You look like you've been working hard. Hey, listen, it hasn't exactly been a pleasure cruise since you guys left. Last night you heard. Earlier. You all right? Yeah. Nothing like a little excitement. <laughs> Segovia tell you? Yeah. First, it was hard to understand him. Half his tongue was burned clean away. <laughs> that man could put away some chili. Yeah. Hey, what's with the Stella thing? The kids will tell you they are high as balloons. Kites, Victor. Oh, right. It's pretty amazing. I mean, it's movie stuff, only it's real. Except the part they don't show you in the movies is the work. Speaking of which, can we get started? Sure.
So what are they doing down there now? They're marking out an area. Start searching it. What are you two up to? TJ's gonna give me a live lift lesson. Maybe I can get school credit for it. The easiest marks to learn are the numbers. So this is one, this is two, three, four. Uh, okay, okay, I think I got that, Kiche. Oh, yeah? So what's five? One, two, three, four, five. Wrong. This is five. No credit yet. Give me another chance. Sure. What's six? That's a sitch. It's usually like this. Now watch. This is 10. And this is 15. Oh, I see. So this would be 19. Hash to A. That's my effort perfect. 20. Fun. No wonder the civilization collapsed. Everybody probably flunked Matt. Hey, you know, Kiche, I bet I could make a computer program that could translate any number from one system to the other. You really know how to use that thing? Some. Come on, let's try it. underground stream coming from the lamp. We could check it out tomorrow if you want. Uh, guess we got enough work to do already. Hey, Pepper, thanks for fixing the starter motor. Oh, sure. Segovia was very impressed with your courage and your chili. Well, for a while it looked like Segovia and I would be having our coffee on the rocks. Anyhow, I refastened the anchor line. We made sure it can't scrape on any more coral. Good job, mate. Thanks. Okay, Kiche, let's get this chow on the table. Tortillas, traditional Mexican beef stew. The only thing I know how to make. Maybe I'll be up to Pepper's cooking, but it'll give us a break from the hot stuff. <laughs> so how was Glyph School today? Uh, uh oh, don't pick. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, your attention, please. <laughs> this should be good. Oh, boy, entertainment. <laughs> Presenting the only computer in the world. In Tulum, anyhow. The only computer in the <laughs> Tulum that speaks Maya. Well, sort <laughs> Whoa, impressive. OK, a number from the audience. Any number. A Maya number? Bars and dots? No, our own kind. Arabic numbers. Any Arabic number, so long as it's from 1 to 20. Ocho. Ocho. Eight. An eight, please. Wow. Fantastic. Looks like Morse code. That's how they wrote the numbers? Yeah, see, a bar is five, and each dot is one. Do another one. Okay, 12. 12. Oh, nifty. Isn't this a 12 right here? Yeah, 12. 
think you can teach the computer numbers over 20? As soon as Kiche teaches me. <laughs> hey, Mom, have you looked at this pot? Not really. It's just a souvenir piece. Sure looks real. Let me see. Mmm. Akarai. What? what? There are more glyphs at the bottom. I can just make them out. See, see? What does it say? It says it's made in Japan. Uh -huh. <laughs> Come on, I'm serious. Your mother's a pottery <laughs> expert. It is darn authentic or a fake. You know something? This little gem just could be real. So it is a prize catch after all. Could be. Hey, Mom. Isn't this the syllable ba? Yep, ba. Then this says cha, ba, la, ma, chak, ba, la, ma, chak, balam. Chak, balam? Chak, balam. Let me see that. Would somebody please tell sure? me who this chak, balam dude is? Remember, he was the king on the Stella we found. See, these people in Koba, the Andrews, found the other half of the monument. To tell what happened to the guy? He was captured and taken to the lost city. Whoa. Yeah, see, these guys think the Stella half we found was ripped off. There must have been looters right here. Now, wait a minute. If this is real, and it's about Chuck Balam, Captain Granville, where did you say you fished this up? I didn't. CT? All those charters kind of all run together. Let's check it out. I was going to ask what you used that thing for. If I could get it bound in leather, it'd be the perfect log. You're welcome to use it. Nothing like being drawn into the 80s on a 1930s sailboat. Now, let's see. November 30th. Oh, right. Those guys. Park Cozumel, Paradise Reef. Now, how could we forget a thing like that? <laughs> That little clay fish was brought up right off Ten Ka. Right down the coast. That's right. Then it could have been looted, too. Right. You got a theory, Captain? I was just recalling that first night we came here, we saw a boat with no running lights inside the reef. When I tried to hail it, it took off so fast that they lost something over the stern. I didn't think much about it till now, but it was pretty big, and it seemed heavy. The Stella! Listen, that dark boat was looters, big time looters. They must operate out of here all the time. Sure, using those temples as lighthouses. Wait a sec, I almost forgot. Look at this. Brought up the end of the anchor line to show you. What do you think? It's been cut. By coral, right? Knife, I'd say. Desgraciados. Ah, oh, I'm glad you're all right. Thanks, amigo. I knew that pot was old. Wait a minute, folks. Let's not jump too far. Is there some way we can check all this out? We could go to Ina. Mañana. The archaeology labs. We can see if the pot is authentic. And report the looting. Can you go? We could take Mimi up to the dock at Playa del Carmen, and we could all go. Great. Um, can I see the pot again? You see something else? And I'm Ben Affleck. And this is Copan. This used to be one of the greatest Maya cities. It's also one of the furthest south, 200 miles from Palenque and Tulum, in the country of Honduras. I came especially to meet the person who was a kind of model for the character of Quiche in the second voyage of the Mimi. When he was a little kid, David Stewart spent a lot of time in Mexico with his archaeologist parents, just as Quiche did. By the time he was 11, he was a real expert on Maya hieroglyphic writing. Now he's a college student, and he's in Copan trying to decipher, or read, the glyphs that the Maya left behind here. He's like a code breaker. 
Monuments like these are called stelas. This one's fancier than the one in the story, but it's the same kind of thing. The guy on it is one of the kings of Copan. David showed me the glyph for his name on the side of the monument. This is the name glyph of the king who's shown on the front of the monument right here. And he's a fellow that we call 18 Rabbit. That's his name. Really? Yeah, and you see, here's some bars here. And you know in, in the way the Maya wrote numbers, each bar means five and each dot means one. And so there's three bars and three dots. And that, it's 18. That's 18. And the rabbit is actually this part right here. It might be a little bit hard to see, but it's an animal head that's looking in this direction. Here's his eye, mm -hmm. and here's his mouth right here, and his tongue is hanging out like that. Mm -hmm. And his ear would have been way up here. Mm -hmm. And that's the rabbit. So we just call him 18 rabbit. It's really hard for me to see because it's all blurry. When I first started looking at Maya glyphs, it was really hard for me, too, to really pick out the details from the rock because mm -hmm. they really look complicated. So what I did is I started to draw the things. And that way, I was able to pick out all the lines and really kind of understand what they were. So let's do a drawing of this cliff here. The animal head looks something like this. His ear back here. Mm -hmm. We're not sure, actually, if it's a rabbit or not. Some people say it's a rabbit, but other people aren't too sure. So we just call him 18 rabbit just mm -hmm. for the heck of it right now little symbol on the back. So of what does that mean? This little symbol here is, um, means yellow. It's the symbol for the color yellow. So it might have been like a yellow rabbit or <laughs> some sort of yellow animal. And here's his tongue, sort of hanging out like that. And there's the animal. Now you can see there's some other signs that are right in front of the animal head right here. Mm -hmm. Looks something like this. See it sort of just curves that go back on each other like that. Oh. And then there's another sign right in front of the smoke which is kind of like a bracket right mm -hmm. here. And if we draw that, it looks something like this. So there are other parts to his name just besides the 18 and the rabbit. Mm -hmm. But we just sort of, sort of abbreviate it and call him 18 rabbit. <laughs> and, the, and the number is right on top, like this. And this is the three bars right here. Mm -hmm. And then the three dots to give you 18. Just like that. And there's his name. Now, with this drawing, you can go around to some of the other inscriptions and pick out which glyph is the name for 18 Rabbit. OK, so this is his name. And the other glyphs in this inscription tell you about the event that happened, it's sort of like one big sentence. Mm -hmm. Let me show you. Okay. Now, the actual event is in this glyph right here. And I don't know, it might be a little hard to make out, but it's a hand. It's a human hand. No. See his thumb? Mm -hmm. And the forefinger and the other fingers are over there. And there are all these dots that are sort of falling from the hand, right between the thumb and the forefinger. Uh -huh. Those dots represent blood, probably. Oh, so really? it's a hand that's sprinkling blood. And that, we think, is the glyph for the rite of bloodletting, when the king um, pierced himself and let his own blood, which was a very important ceremony for Maya kings. No one knows why making themselves bleed was so important for 18 Rabbit and the other Maya kings. Maybe it had to do with offering their royal blood to the gods. The hand sign, like this, mm -hmm. with the fingers, they go like that. And there's the thumb and the forefinger here. There's a little circle in the hand. And then there are dots that come out of the hand like that. Mm -hmm. And that's the blood sort of that the king is sprinkling. And then there's another symbol down here that we can't really read. <laughs> That's true of a lot of glyphs. There's a lot we can't read yet. Mm -hmm. And then there's this thing right in front, this bracket-shaped sign. And this is the sign that means, it, it means he or his. It's like a pronoun, and it says that he scattered. This part right here is in here, the other glyph, too. That's right. That's really good recognizing that. <laughs> Because that's actually the process we use to decipher glyphs, is looking at different ones and seeing which signs show up in each one. You see this bracket here? That's exactly the same sign as in that glyph for sprinkling blood. <laughs> Except here, we're not too sure what it means. It's really good to recognize that. That's exactly how we decipher glyphs. So what day did he actually let blood? Well, the inscription tells us the very day he did this. But um, I couldn't tell you right now what the date is in our calendar. I'd need a computer program or something mm -hmm. to really figure that out. But 
the, in, the date that they give on this inscription is in the long count, in the Maya calendar. And it says it's nine bhak tunes, mm -hmm. 15 katuns, zero tunes, zero winals, and zero keens. And that was a really important date in the Maya calendar because of those zeros at the end. That means it was a period ending. It was the end of 15 katuns. Oh. And the king celebrated that 18 rabbit by sprinkling his own blood, probably in a public ceremony. David really did help me see the glyphs better. At the next monument, I could already pick out one I knew. There it is. Yeah, you got it. 18 Rabbit. <laughs> That's 18 Rabbit. That's the name of the king right there. And there's one other glyph right here that I think you'll be interested in. This is the glyph that seems to stand for the, the city-state of Copan. This is the face of a bat, and the bat was the emblem of Copan. This is what's called an emblem glyph. Now, the sign on top here, mm -hmm. this stands for the Maya word ahau, which means ahau. king. Ahau, it means king or ruler. Oh. And the sign in front here with the dots, mm -hmm. you remember dots before anywhere else? Well, <laughs> there were darts in the Maya numbers, and there was dots like representing blood. Representing blood, that's exactly what this is, yeah. This is the sign that stands for blood. Okay. And so there's a blood sign and then king. And an emblem glyph, the way it seems to read is that 18 Rabbit was the king of the bloodline or the dynasty of the bat of Copan, of this city-state. David is an expert in Maya writing, but he's just learning about some other parts of archaeology. His teacher here is the head archaeologist, Dr. Bill Fash. Bill showed me around one of the temples he and his students are trying to put back together. This is Temple 26 with its famous hieroglyphic stairway, which has the longest hieroglyphic inscription in the New World. Wow, what does it say? Well, this is a site history. It starts out with some of the earliest kings and tells us all about them when they were born, when they came to power, maybe important conquests they made, and when they died. And then they pick up with the history of the next king. And they go on all the way up to the 15th king, who's shown on the stela, or statue here, right in front of the stairway. Who's that? That is a fellow by the name of Smoke Shell. He was the 15th king in the history of Copan. Everything the archaeologists dig up has to be drawn, photographed, and cataloged. Like this foot from a statue they now realize must have fallen off Temple 26. It's not always easy to know where all the pieces belong. This enormous pile of sculpture here is uh, what we call our God Only Knows pile. <laughs> And the God Only Knows pile is stuff that came out from five different temples. This was piled here by earlier archaeologists, oh. but we had no idea where any of these things came from. Bill and his wife, Barbara, have invented a way to put some of the big pieces of sculpture back together. They put them in a sandbox so they can move them around and try different ways. It's like fitting together pieces of a puzzle, a very heavy puzzle. Sometimes they can put the pieces together right back up on the building. These workers are Mayans. That doesn't necessarily mean they know about Mayan archaeology, but they've worked here for so many years that they're real experts now. Not all the work takes a strong back. This guy's using a dentist tool to clean a piece of sculpture. Archaeologists have been working at Copan for nearly a hundred years but they still make some amazing discoveries. In fact, David made one. Bill gave him the chance to supervise some digging under the hieroglyphic staircase. As a student, he had never done that before. He told us what happened. And all of a sudden, one of the workmen called me over and said, Ceramica, Ceramica, a pot, a pot. And I came down and looked at it. And there was just a little piece of it that he had nicked away with his pick when he was digging. And it was clear that the thing was whole in the dirt. And so we spent the rest of the day exposing it. And we realized how important it was, because it was a really big pot. The pot was important, all right. Bill and David took us to the laboratory to show us what was in it. Carved jade. Bill says these treasures left behind by smoke shell and discovered 1,200 years later by David's crew are the most spectacular ever found at Copan. But this plain shell, which was also in the pot, might be the most unusual thing ever found. Well, there's all sorts of stuff inside, you see, along the, a little bit on the outside and here. 
And we're really not too, too sure what that is, although we have an idea that it might actually be blood. Blood? blood. Yeah, the remnants of, what? of human blood. From the bloodletting rite that the king um, did when he dedicated the building. Most archaeologists work a lifetime without making such a discovery. But David seems just as interested in solving puzzles as he is in finding treasure. And the last thing he showed us was another puzzle. The Great Ball Court at Copan is one of the most impressive and well-preserved anywhere. But archaeologists still don't know much about the ball game itself. We know that they probably had like a rubber ball that was, you know, about so big. Mm -hmm. And probably like one person played another person. Maybe they, even the kings played each other. Is it like a kind of a duel type of thing, or? Well, maybe in a, in a in a general way, yeah. Did they play on this this stuff, this this long like slanted? Well, the slanted area here on the sides of the ball court were probably just for the ball to go up and down. Not when that they, they played. were bleachers or something. Yeah, probably not. They pay, people probably sat on the steps around, you know, in the plaza and so forth. And then the these markers that you see up here, these um, big parrot heads or big macaws. Um, we don't really know what they're used for. You know, maybe, maybe marked it, something. Yeah, they marked zones or something of the field or something like that. They do look like parrots and they have the eyes and the little yeah. beak. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty nice carvings. We may never know much more about the Maya ball game. In fact, a lot about the ancient Maya will always be a mystery. But for people like David and Barbara and Bill, solving mysteries is what archaeology is all about. <laughs>